So yeah, welcome everybody to today's workshop. My name, if you don't know me, I'm sure I've spoken to a few of you before, but my name's Tom Button and I'm a senior cloud pre-sales engineer at Inti um, as part of the Azure practice. I specialize in Azure Virtual Desktop and um, we're joined today by Mark Deacon from Microsoft. So Mark, I'll let you introduce yep. yourself here if you may, sir. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So my name is Mark Deakin. I'm a partner technology strategist at Microsoft. Uh, and so I work with a very small subset of our partners, uh, Inti, of course, being uh, my favorite. Uh, and uh, I work with uh, those partners uh, to try and help them connect out to, to the, the different partners that we don't speak to directly uh, about the kind of technologies that kind of matter to us and matter to our customers uh, and WVD and AVD, uh, sorry, AVD and uh, Windows 365 are, are two great examples of just that. Cool. Um, so for those of you that have joined an Inti um, or a, a Me webinar in the past, this won't be following the similar trends. So normally I'd have my camera off, be just delivering slides to you. Um, there are actually only four slides on this whole deck. So Mark and I will essentially just be having a conversation around Windows 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop Solution Stacks, the differences between the two solutions, um, considerations you should be making before planning any deployment and so on. Um, but before we jump in, a few housekeeping rules, I guess. So this session will be recorded. So if you'd like a copy post session, just let me or let your account manager know um, and we'll be sure to get that sent out to you. Um, additionally, if you have any questions as we move through the workshop, please just put them in the, the Q&A box or the message box and we'll do our best to answer all questions at the end. Um, if we don't get a chance to answer all of the questions specifically, we'll be answering them all in textual format anyway and we'll be sending them out to um, all participants after the session. Um, and of course, if you'd like a one on one with uh, me or a member of the Azure practice regarding anything we go through today, same process applies. Speak to your account manager or speak to me directly and we can get something arranged. Obviously, as a partner of Inti, that's all included in what we do for you guys. So um, yeah, happy to do so. And without further ado, let's get stuck in. So um, Mark, over to you with the questions far away. Yeah, so so we've had a, a good chat about um, W365 and AVD between ourselves, but can we start with um, Windows 365? Can you give me uh, and everyone else listening uh, a quick overview of the solution from a, a distributor's point of view? Yeah, no problem. So um, I think before we discuss the, discuss the why, it's important for all attendees to understand the why. Um, We've, we've naturally seen a huge shift towards remote and hybrid working in the last two years for somewhat obvious reasons. And um, during that time, there's been a focus not only from, from Inti, but also from Microsoft around Azure Virtual Desktop, so streaming desktops, remote applications, and essentially moving that kind of on-premise mindset to cloud infrastructure. My role at Inti on a daily basis involves around engaging with partners and a common scenario that I've encountered personally over the last two years is that the cloud adoption we expected to take place over the last kind of or the next sort of three or five years has essentially been accelerated to an immediate requirement, hence the mass adoption of ABD. Subsequently, though, as a result of that, it's clear that there's a knowledge gap when it comes to modern desktop virtualization, especially when mm -hmm. customers' demands are, you know, we wanted this yesterday or you know we needed this a week ago which is where i'd say kind of enter w365 to a certain extent with you know almost an almost identical experience to avd from an end user perspective i.e streaming desktops from anywhere on any device whilst eliminating the more complex deployments of both traditional vdi and modern avd installations i personally see w365 as a simplified virtual desktop solution that provides almost an entrance into remote and hybrid working scenarios for MSPs with all levels of Azure experience, even if it's just for the short term. Excellent, fair enough. Uh, and so so what kind of partners do you think are suitable for, for Windows 365? And I suppose likewise, uh, 
what sort of customers should they be looking for as well? Okay, so I mean, the technical capabilities of our partner base understandably vary dramatically, right? So, you know, we have MSPs with established Azure practices like we do, um, some of those actually more experienced than us, funnily enough, through to those beginning their entire virtualization journey or even just their Azure journey. Um, and because of this, there are opportunities that come partners way, which are somewhat reactive. And by reactive, I mean, you know, the customer comes to them and says, we've heard about Azure, we've heard about AVD, mm. we've heard about W365, and we want to move our infrastructure to it. Because, I mean, maybe they've seen something on LinkedIn, they've seen a neighboring company have just done the same, or maybe they've had an outage and they've quickly Googled how to move everything to the cloud. Um, and, you know, the possibilities are endless on that front. And, you know, therefore the partner has been forced into exploring, testing and deploying AVD solutions, potentially without any virtualization experience at all. Um, yeah. And W365 is, you know, it's designed for ultimate simplicity, both from, you know, a technical and a commercial perspective, giving partners and customers alike the ability to deploy virtual desktops in, I mean, minutes, I mean, definitely under an hour that can be accessed yeah. pretty much anywhere on any device you can humanly think of. Um, and I mean, from a partner perspective, like why you'd likely use W365 over AVD, I mean, we'll get onto that later in a bit more detail. Okay. Yeah. And it's not necessarily sector specific or, you know, user account specific, it's more it's more of a technical conversation and a technical thought process that needs to be had. Like, okay. I mean, for example, as a snapshot, does the customer, you know, do they currently have an Azure footprint? Um, do they want fixed price per user pricing? Do they want end users managing their own desktop without centralized control? Do they need remote app streaming? Do they want full hypervisor level backup in DR? So as you can see, it's not just as simple as our customer has 25 users, what solution should I use, Tom? But obviously utilizing Inti's Azure practice and the assistance that you guys get as partners of Inti, we can help you through that discovery phase as well. So it's kind of like a mixture of partner capability plus how flexible they want to be, I suppose, to a certain Pre extent. Precisely, yeah. Precisely. So, uh, excellent. So. You kind of mentioned that uh, the user experience for for end users is very similar to to, to AVD as it is for for uh, Windows three six five, and so how does that look? Uh, and how does the inter the user or the the employee interact with uh, Windows three six five? Yeah, um, the differences come from kind of more of an administration perspective, right? But okay. in terms of accessing AVD and W three six five, is yep. you know. As you said, it's somewhat similar. All you need to access both is a device with a browser that has a stable internet connection. Um, yep. And assuming you have that somewhat stable internet connection, you'll be able to connect to it through remote desktop app as well as a HTML over a browser. So, I mean, in other words, okay. it'll work on Macs, iPads, iPhones, Android devices, Chromebooks, Linux PCs, and pretty much Anything, anything with a screen, browser. pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and a browser. They can run a modern Maybe. browser, like I mean, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever. Really, I've got a browser on my watch. Would it? Do you think I could? Should I try and get it working on there? Yeah, I've I've heard um, I've heard cases of people <laughs> running Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 on their um, tablets in the middle of their Tesla cars, which is pretty. Oh, cool. now we're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that as an idea. Anyway, yeah. I, I once looked at a Samsung fridge that had uh, a display on there. And obviously the uh, the the ability to be able to connect to a desktop from your fridge is is very high up in the things that I'd like to do in my life. Yeah, precisely. That's a tick bucket list, isn't it? That? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It's a different bucket list, but it is one that I feel I should tick. Yeah, it's the um, bucket list. <laughs> Indeed, very much so. So I can, I can see on the screen as well that there's uh, two different... Uh, Windows 365 subscription models, so uh, business and enterprise. Mm -hmm. and so from your uh, perspective, um, does this have an effect on more the administrative side? Uh, and so if so, what's kind of the main difference? Yeah, so I mean, it's important for everyone to understand that there's, there's obviously two differences 
um, two for yep. subscriptions for W365. So you've got business and enterprise, obviously. Um, and they're pretty different as well. Um, yeah. Enterprise cloud PCs are essentially designed for businesses who have MEM, so Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and are using yep. these to manage their existing desktops. Whereas business cloud PCs are designed, I mean, in my opinion, for individual users and businesses who are the type of organizations that would typically go to their local IT retailer when they need a mm -hmm. new PC quickly. Um, I mean, from a technical perspective, the biggest difference is for me that from an enterprise standpoint, you need an Azure subscription, whereas with a business subscription, you don't. And within that Azure subscription, you'll also need a VNet or for the an Azure Savvy, a virtual network. You need yep. Azure AD Connect configured and running with Azure Active Directory with Azure Active Directory hybrid join enabled and Intune as every single user on the enterprise queue needs an Intune license, whereas business users don't. So on the flip side of that, um, uh, the cloud PCs for business run entirely on Microsoft's Azure subscription and infrastructure. So no yep. need to worry about that. As I've already said, Intune isn't a requirement. Um, they can only be ma managed directly by the user, just like your standalone physical Windows device. There's yep. no prereqs for setup. You just simply assign the user a license in the 365 admin portal and away they go. But there is, of course, a limit. So the, the user limit for the business version is 300. Um, I mean, obviously, you can see on, on screen here a bit more of a deeper technical dive, and I'm keen not to... Yep read off the screen, but just to mention a few, you've got self-serve upgrades, universal in print integration, custom images, endpoint analytics, and the connection availabilities, you know, on-prem networks and apps and general resources as well. So quite a big difference from a business and enterprise perspective. Excellent. Cool. That, that really helps. Thank you. Uh, and the last question on this, like how much does this cost? And then we can see see the uh, cost there. Can you talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, no problem. So obviously you can see on screen here the costs. We have the retail costs. These are, by the way. Um, there's okay. obviously a lot more options available to you. I've just kind of picked these out as general options that you might commonly go for. Um, for the business SKUs, as we've already discussed, there are no tech uh, prerequisites at all. You don't need the Azure subscription or an AD domain controller, but literally everything, and I mean everything, works with Azure AD, and Microsoft manages all of it. You know, just pay your monthly subscription, provision your hardware using the defaults, and you're up and running with the costs on screen. However, if you want more control and features as a customer or as a partner for your customers, you'll want the enterprise SKU, um, which, as you can see on screen, has a cheaper per license cost, but also requires Intune as a necessity, by the way. Um, yeah. Plus you'll have that Azure consumption on top as well from a networking perspective. Um, I've heard rumors that this might be potentially looking to be eradicated. However, at the moment, this is a requirement. Okay, cool, thank you. And as we've discussed W365, are you, you okay to talk to me about a AVD as well? Yeah, no problem at all. Okay. so. I mean, on, on the surface of things, W365 and AVD are identical in their intentions, right? And to the user, the experience is almost exactly the same. However, it's under the surface from an MSP or an IT administration perspective that they are completely different solutions. So we talked about how W365 is ideal for simplicity. So if we kind of take the opposite approach for AVD, it's designed for full control and full flexibility. So with AVD, you're capable of and not capable with W365, mm -hmm. you know, streaming not just only single user Windows desktops, but also remote apps and multi-session Windows desktops. You can use yeah. FS Logics. You can optimize your Azure consumption granularly as well. Um, you've got the option of auto scaling, providing full backup and DR at hypervisor level. You can use all of Azure's native monitoring tools. You can integrate with Citrix and VMware and much, much more as well. Um, in terms of who this is targeted towards um, and taking into consideration those benefits, it's likely the majority of partners on this call are already thinking, well, something that Tom's just mentioned on that list is essential for us. You know, 
yeah. potentially providing full backup and DR at hypervisor level is essential to you, which you know is understandable. So you know you've almost answered your own question to a certain extent there in the audience if you're thinking this way. So that would be the best solution for you to be looking to upscale on. But again, you might actually find benefit in using both potentially. It really depends on a specific user case. But I mean, for me personally, the ability to stream remote apps, use multi-session as an OS, auto scale, FS logics is for me almost essential in what I try to build, but it mm -hmm. will depend on most, you know, will depend on a per user basis. Cool. Thank you. And you've mentioned flexibility and you've already provided uh, a few examples of differences between the two uh, solution stacks. Mm -hmm. Is there any other kind of examples you want to be able to share? Yeah, OK, so so let's let's take W365. So a, a cloud PC yeah. is it's a dedicated desktop, right? So one user, one PC. However, with AVD, multi-session is available. And by multi-session, I mean, you know, we can have multiple users accessing a single VM, which isn't possible at all with W365. Um, obviously, the number of users varies heavily dependent on the user profile and the type of applications being consumed. You know, if X user is just using Microsoft Word, for example, but Y user is using Photoshop or Teams for Video um, or AutoCAD and so on, it will vary. However, Mm -hmm. As an example, less leverage, um, a typical user using standard office applications and maybe teams for video, moderate internet usage and so on. On a four core VM, you should realistically expect, and I mean, depending on the v VM family, so let's say we went with like an E-series, you'd have the yeah. ability to be able to accommodate between maybe four and six users to that session host, maybe eight, depending on the, um, the family. Um, and in addition to the number of users on that virtual machine, you can also auto scale it. You can also auto scale it, auto, auto, also auto scale it. You can load balance it to optimize your customers' costs by you know, switching the VMs off when they're not being used, and then customize how users are distributed amongst the virtual machines in that pool. Um, so again, it's just a quick example and overview as to how the flexibility in AVD can be seen as a benefit. But hopefully that answers your question. It does, yeah. I also like the idea of auto auto scaling. Like you yeah. don't even need to switch it on; it automatically switches itself on. Can you turn that back to Microsoft and potentially rebrand? Uh, the, uh, uh, I I will do exactly that. Uh, and uh, should it come out, uh, I can't commit to being able to give you a, a <laughs> like a, a piece of the revenue. You you've <laughs> essentially put it out in the public domain by saying this. I'm afraid. Cool. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you did mention auto scaling. Uh, how does this affect the cost? Okay, so again, going back to kind of W three six five, you know, business is a fixed cost solution. Enterprise mm -hmm. is primarily a fixed cost solution too. However, on the other hand, it's AVD is advertised as a consumption based product, meaning obviously you yeah. pay for what you use. So obviously, the less mm -hmm. you use, the less you pay. And I'm I'm smiling because I'm going to contradict exactly what I've just said <laughs> later on. Um, but yes, through auto scaling, you can obviously schedule the VMs to start and stop based on peak yep. and off peak working hours. You can scale out the VMs based on the number of sessions per CPU core. You can scale in VMs during off peak hours as well. So you just leave the minimum number of session hosts um, running required. Obviously. You know, the less time the VMs are running and the less VMs that are ultimately running as a collective, the less money our partners, yeah. customers will be paying at the end of the month. You know, and this is the kind of unrivaled control that you get in AVD over W365 as a as a solution, in my opinion. OK, cool. Thank you very much. And so so as AVD is purely a consumption based product, uh, mm -hmm. How does the the costing um, work? How do you how do you figure out that? How would I, as a partner of NT, uh, price an AVD solution? Yeah. Okay. So it's important to um, it's important to remember that AVD is primarily a Microsoft managed solution, and therefore, obviously, you're not paying for the traditional VDI components, you know, such as like your brokerage, diagnostics, gateway, web access, and so on, and 
obviously I'm not going to price out an entire solution on the call today. However, there are several key components to consider. So, you know, your session hosts, um, your storage solution for FS logics and how you manage the profiles of the users. You'd obviously have your networking components as well. And these costs will vary dependent on employee count, specifications, applications, and so on. But whilst we're here, and the reason why I was smiling a second ago is the idea behind providing a fixed cost solution on AVD, which is in itself a very interesting topic. And I think everyone attending today would agree that, you know, on the face of it, AVD is a consumption based solution, right? And that's as it's advertised versus W365. And Obviously, if you said yes to that, you'd be correct. You'd be right in assuming that on the face of it, you pay for what you use and therefore AVD is consumption based. But when you start factoring in reserved instances, which are um, annual or three year commitments to compute, yeah. auto scaling um, and so on, you can actually provide a fixed cost per user solution to your customer base using AVD. And I've personally, and we as a practice and we as a business, have worked with a number of our partners so far um, on building out these predictable fixed cost solutions. So just as an example, you could have like a bronze, silver and gold package, and then yep. using as a blueprint, so you can just deploy them horizontally across your customer base. Um, it's a topic for an, for an entire workshop in itself, to be honest, but fortunately for the partners of Inti, Obviously, I've already mentioned it, but you have access to the Azure practice to lean on for yeah. support around you know, anything that we've discussed. So whether it's the enablement team, whether it's the pre-sales team where I sit, the commercial team, you know, we can help price out AVD solutions. We can help price out comparisons against W365. We can look at fixed cost solutions like this, helping partners take that kind of stuff to market on a repeatable basis. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean info for you mark but for anybody listening that's interested in yeah. that kind of stuff if you need any assistance on that front again same as i mentioned at the beginning reach out to me directly or um your account manager and we'll we'll do that one-on-one -on -one, not a problem ultimately like if anyone's in doubt right they can they can ask you right that's the that's the important thing to to go do because you've got experience of of having to do it before uh and so they don't need to learn their own mistakes they can learn from ones that have been made previously yeah, Probably not by yourself. <laughs> yeah, precisely. But the the whole um, fixed cost solution is is a really really interesting area at the moment. Um, yeah. Especially for smaller customers as well, they want that predictability, right? They want to know what we're going to be spending every single month. You know, if it's off by fifty quid here or there, it's maybe not too bad. But by all, you want the figure to be roughly what you were initially quoted. Um, and being able to use AVD to deliver that while still having that customization and that full flexibility is is a really really attractive proposition um so yeah if anybody wants to discuss yeah. we're happy to engage on that front we've kind of almost come full circle right from you you pay for um a service or you pay for a server or whatever and you, you get what you have yeah through to a we'd like to pay for what we use uh, and then actually a number of people have gone but i'd like that to be a fixed cost please thank you very much thank so it's uh it's kind of the best of both worlds in that sense exactly so so how would you ultimately compare avd and and w365 like if you had to summarize okay so you know we have we have the slide on screen here and i will i've tried to avert running through them but i i will run through this one for the, the <laughs> no same. Worries. um so so we've got the three comparisons here right so we've got what they're optimized for, technical consumption, and so on. So obviously we know Windows 365 is optimized for simplicity. AVD is optimized for flexibility. From a technical consumption perspective, business is fully Microsoft managed, right? Enterprise is fully Microsoft managed bar the networking component. AVD mm -hmm. is fully customer managed. So for our partners as the MSP, whether you're doing that um, on behalf of your customers entirely or whether that's a hybrid setup um, that is going to be fully managed by you. From an OS perspective, fairly straightforward with W365, whereas with AVD, we have the multi-session option as well as Windows Server as well. From a business continuity and disaster recovery perspective, there's not currently any hypervisor level backups available for W365. 
Whereas with AVD, we have full DR backup and snapshots available to us. Um, and again, this is one of the big ones as well. So from an optimization standpoint, we have you know, auto scaling RIs, CSP software subscriptions, et cetera, available through AVD. Um, whereas at the moment on W365, that is fairly limited. Um, and again, on the commercial side of things, uh, yeah, W365 license for business with the additionals here on enterprise that we've already covered. Um, and AVD is purely Azure consumption. Um, but to share my own opinion um, and my own experiences, I guess, from a pre-sale standpoint, um, first things to note is it's AVD and W365 are both complementary services. Um, but to reiterate what I've kind of already mentioned, I guess, W365 was ultimately designed for simplicity. So allowing customers to get the benefits of virtual desktops generally without requiring that you know, full Azure expertise. Um, you could also take the view that it's a plausible gateway into providing virtual desktops for your customers whilst you're potentially on that learning path towards AVD, you could say. Yeah. Um, Whilst on the other hand, obviously, AVD is designed for full flexibility, both from a technical and commercial perspective. So it provides, you know, non-persistent desktops, remote app streaming and so on. But from a pre-sales perspective, there's kind of like a natural decision flow that I go through when I'm scoping out an opportunity um, with a partner. So you know, maybe they've come to me and they've said, do we look at W365 or AVD for this? And there tends to be a, a process flow that I go through. So from a thought perspective, it's kind of, does the customer currently have less than 10 desktops? Do they currently have an Azure environment or are they planning on building an Azure environment? Do they have any virtualization experience or do you as the MSP um, have any virtualization experience or little virtualization experience? Are the customer or do you as the MSP currently use or using MEM, so Microsoft Endpoint Manager, to administer physical desktops? And do the end users need local admin rights? So if you answered yes to the majority of those questions, then W365 is actually likely going to be a suitable solution, at least in the short term. Um, yep. We'll then dive a little bit deeper, and this is kind of where we get to AVD territory. So the questions that I typically then tend to follow are, you know, does the customer have, or do you as the MSP have virtualization experience? Right. Are full desktops even required? You know, could you just use remote app streaming or do you want to use a blend of both, which is often a typical scenario? Mm -hmm. Do the quantity of desktops and users fluctuate? Is a cheaper cost the primary factor when deciding on your virtualization solution? And do you require full backup and DR at hypervisor level? If you wanted yes to at least three out of five of those questions, then AVD is actually likely the better solution. Um, and that's kind of the process that I take from a pre-sales perspective, at least in kind of scoping stage. We'll then obviously look at kind of sign afterwards, but that typically dictates where we are and what solution we should look at. And that's kind of my personal take on W365 yeah. and AVD. Um, so thanks for the questions, Mark. And if I no maybe is so kind to do so, can I, put some back to you from a Microsoft perspective? Sure, yeah, yep. Cool, so from a Microsoft perspective then, what is the opportunity at the moment, both for W365 and AVD? So uh, I think we see a similar opportunity to, to you. So I'll, I'll summarize and maybe uh, cover some of the areas that you went into, but to, to your point, it really is about flexibility, AVD versus simplicity, right? And and that could be both for the customer, but also for the partner is the way that I look at it. Uh, it could be consumption based versus a predictable user. Although to your point, you know, you can still do the consumption based piece within yeah. uh, a predictable cost, right? So so maybe actually that is an, an, an element of what a, a partner or a customer, but a partner certainly would need to think about. Yeah. I see from my experience, W365 tends to be more for, for smaller organizations. 
the weird thing is is it's never like a um not a cookie cutter it's never um a hard and fast kind of rule mm-hmm. the w365 uh is usually for businesses with smaller organizations to your point limited kind of experience and that could either be the customer or or for me sometimes it might just be the partner right the partner doesn't have that much experience in, in virtualization w365 is totally the right route to go mm-hmm. avd is probably where they it's a larger business that the partner's speaking to uh with some previous kind of uh it experience or even the partner themselves have that experience and so they might perhaps more kind of go down the the avd route uh, as a preference the important thing being is there's something there for every partner and pretty much for every customer yeah precisely i think i think that's the big thing for me as well actually i think there was quite a big gap in the market for microsoft to fill um and I think it's been well filled now. So it's very, very positive. Um, I suggest to fill that gap, obviously. So <laughs> we, we we were actually looking at um, third party solutions as well in terms of trying to fill that gap ourselves in terms of you know speeding up the process of ABD deployments and so on. Um, but a native Microsoft solution to actually fill that gap is from a product standpoint anyway, is really great. So yeah, thank you for I well, thank you or do I just thank the business generally as as a whole thank me man well thank you yeah <laughs> um, so how should how should our partners be in your opinion positioning both of these solution yeah. stacks to their customers from like a go-to-market perspective yep so so I the first thing I would say right is think of it as a bigger hybrid work discussion I know there's a temptation to kind of sell the technology as is but using these solutions is probably part of a bigger conversation that you're going to have uh your partners will be having with with their end customer right um especially as we now have this it's funny we have this thing we call hybrid work now that probably existed before it's just it wasn't as obvious and you and i have probably spent years trying to get partners and customers to think about this but now really hybrid hybrid work is here to stay so so certainly include it as as part of that conversation the other thing you should think about as well is it's not just selling that solution. There's there's much more to be done that the partners can offer. So there's something as simple as the subscription setup. Uh, there'll be certain elements for each of these solutions. So for W365, you might do drive and, and printer mapping as an example. It's the different deployment profiles you might uh, select for someone. And then there's obviously like maintenance and help desk. So certainly when uh, the partner's going to market, uh, have it part of a bigger conversation that is hybrid work. Uh, but the second piece is don't have it as here is the solution that I can sell you slightly cheaper than the next person. Offer some services around that as well in both instances to to help the the partner get some value out there. Okay. And um, where where have Microsoft seen the successes so far from a W365 and an, an AVD perspective? Yeah, so so the the best example I've I've seen thus far was uh, I think it's Hapag Lloyd, uh, and so it's a, a firm that uh, owns a bunch of um, ships, container ships, uh, sending things around the world, and so uh, back in March, as you would expect, uh, they had a, a sudden requirement to everybody working from home, uh, so they actually have fourteen thousand remote workers that they needed to move to a um, a remote working solution in the space of a week. Uh, now they already had a VPN in place, but they weren't able to scale that VPN that quickly. Uh, and also a bunch of their employees had their own hardware. So yes, you could have uh, scaled up the VPN. Yes, you could have sent out all of these laptops or devices, but actually they only had a week to do it. So um, uh, that would have been someone very busy uh, putting uh, you know, laptops and, and what have you in the post. Uh, and also a very busy postman one, I presume. So uh, instead, they went down the route uh, of W365, I think in this instance. Oh, no, uh, AVD. Uh, and actually, um, they were able to um, take their own, uh, have people use their own hardware. 
Uh, and they had something like 9,000 simultaneous desktops uh, for, for AVD um, connecting at nearly one point. So they didn't need the full kind of 14,000, but they were able to do 9,000 simultaneous desktops uh, and get that all sorted within a week. Now, that sort of scenario doesn't happen all the time, but it does give you a good uh, idea whether it's at a large scale like that or a small business. Let's say, for, a, for example, a business that suddenly needs to have people working from home because uh, the office is flooded or or something along those lines uh, along those lines this is a great kind of opportunity or a great example of where you can suddenly switch to remote working very easily uh, using AVD in this instance cool and so how can inti partners partners of ours go yep. to market with both of these solutions that we've discussed today so, so I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier on, but but I think you, you have to make this as part of a, a bigger offering around hybrid work that will include a conversation about M365, Teams, Power Apps, all the other solutions that sit within uh, M365. I guess the temptation is if you're used to virtualized desktop, you might say to your customer, is it a virtualized desktop you want? Uh, the answer is probably no, right? They don't give a crap about whether it's virtualized or not. They just want to be able to uh, uh, do hybrid work or remote work. Uh, and so there are other elements uh, that they will need in order to be able to deliver that, right? And so I think the partners need to add this into the discussion that they already have around hybrid work. And if they don't have a discussion around hybrid work, they need a discussion around hybrid work and make sure this is kind of included. That would be my kind of uh, a way of, of thinking for your partners to, to to go go talk to their customers about this. No, that's really interesting. Thanks for that, Mark. No um, worries. So we'll take some, some questions. Um, I've had some questions come in on uh, oh. On my teams from from partners that are on the, on the call at the moment. Um, you take the difficult ones. I'll take the easy ones. Okay. So, <laughs> can we install programs in W three six five? For instance, Sage accounts, um, graphics applications, and so on. So, so yeah. So, um, um, so apps. So apps can be deployed by. Obviously, MEM or Config Manager as well with co-management or W365 Enterprise. But for yeah. Windows 365 business, the cloud PCs can be optionally um, manually enrolled into MEM by the end user, and then they can just yeah. kind of download them um, themselves. Um, next question. So can yeah. we build an image with our apps inside? I know this answer, but do you want to take it? Do you want to bat uh, it? No. No, I'm oh. going to bat that one over to you, That's mate. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but for 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 Windows uh, 365 Enterprise only um, is the answer to that. Custom images are, yeah, entirely, entirely supported. Um, next one's a really, really good one, actually. How good is audio and visual pass-through? Um, it works best with the remote desktop client as opposed to HTML. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of um, network guidelines and, and documentations uh, that Microsoft have, have released on uh, guidelines and um, expectations and considerations around networking. So maybe have a, a granular, granular look into that. But yeah, from a remote desktop perspective, uh, it works a lot better than HTML. Um, uh, questions coming in. I'm seeing questions. There's, the time. there's another question um, I can see. So for Windows 365, what are the update options uh, from Windows 10 to Windows 11? That's a good one. I've I've not not heard of anything as yet. Presumably. For Windows 365, if that's something we've managed uh, or we manage the most of, right, then then at some point we'll just make it available after October 5th or whatever the day is. I don't know if you've got any other thoughts around that, not not kind of knowing 
what we might decide anyway. No, precisely the same as you, precisely the same as you. I'm just reading the other questions as well. So is it possible to have a fully in, interpretable solution, including w 365 business ABD? Um, yeah, so Andy, yeah, so basically, is it possible to have a, a solution including obviously like W365 business, on-prem servers and AVD? The answer is yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, at Microsoft, what we have a, a mixture of all three of those for a start. So yeah. all the, not as many on-prem servers as you would uh, suspect. In fact, even those on-prem ones are probably sitting in Azure. So BA can certainly mix the three of them, right? Yeah. Um, is there a plan for education additions, so licenses? Um, I've not seen anything on this personally. Um, as far as it's well, currently, no, I don't know if there's anything that you're aware currently, of. Currently, no, I've not seen anything uh, discussed uh, as well. I guess if one was to speculate, it would kind of make sense at some point. I think for making stuff available in education, usually, usually the uh, the challenge is a is a uh, subscription system one for us. I think internally, rather than the technically making it available per se. Mm -hmm. So, so I imagine that's just something that they're working on. But, but given who else is in education from a competitor standpoint, it would make sense for us to do that, right? But, but yeah. yeah, not not seeing anything official. So there's a couple of questions that have come in. Um, if you already have an Azure hosted server, brackets, domain controller, can Windows 365 integrate with that? Um, yes, Sim you just simply um, connect the cloud PC, so the Windows 365 device, to the VNet um, that has line of sight to the domain controller, essentially, so yeah. And David's question, is essentially the same. So can you connect it to an existing virtual server? Yes. Got yeah. Um, I'm is there a thumbs way... upping the ones that we've already done to make it easier. Cool. I think we might. I've I've got quite a few that have come in on my team. Yeah, cool. so I might have Take to go care. back to everybody. But I'll try and answer a couple more. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way of using redundant PCs, i.e. ones that have now unsupported operating systems on them, i.e. XP maybe? Um, it's a nice idea, but um, no, unfortunately. So it's Windows 10, 1909 or later only. Um, so Paul, and this might be a, you know an initial thought rather than for a definite yes, no. Paul Maple has asked, Will W365 business fail the Cyber Essential certification? So question uh, A7.6 is, how do you ensure that staff only use administrator accounts to carry out administrative activities, such as installing software or making configuration changes? So I guess the, the question there is, if someone's using W365 business, how much kind of administrator um, uh, power do they have? They Over they will manage install. they man they manage the devices, right? Yeah. They they will they will be the ones managing the devices ultimately. So if they if they want to install software onto that device, they will they can to do so. Yeah. So um, you, you may very well have your answer there, but yeah, sorry. Um, and I've got loads more questions that have come in. So I think what uh, cool. we're going to have to do, yeah. guys, um, I'm going to have to take all these questions away, do a write up of them um answer them all in textual format and i'll send the answers to every single question even the ones that we've already answered verbally um okay. to everybody that's attended today's session um obviously if you have any more questions just fire them in it doesn't have to be one if you've got a list of 30 just chuck them into the chat box um, and i'll answer every single one or me and mark will answer every single one um and we'll send that out post session